Hello. Am I am I audible? <laughs> I'm glad you're ready to learn. <laughs> All right, somebody could give me. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, it's working. Maybe I don't know how what my delay is on this, but yeah, I think it's fine. Oh, nice, lovely, cool, cool. That's great to hear. Nice, nice. Yeah, using st stock Apple headphones. But yeah, should be okay. Um, so yeah, I hope everyone's keeping well tonight. Um, I'm probably just going to wait another minute just to see if, uh, if anyone is late joining or whatnot because I just started before 8. Hey, yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I'll just go over what I'm going to do today. Um, I said that uh, for the Create Together Masterclass, I thought I'd do something different. Um, I know it's kind of heavily based on uh, audio or music. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've included some tools here. Um, and I'll go over some tools um, that I've kind of been experimenting with uh, on certain projects, be it for audio and visual purposes, um, that take advantage of these like new tools that are available um, through different uh, AI and machine learning um, programs or softwares. Um, so yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be light, it's not gonna be too heavy. I won't go into the nitty gritty of how these, uh, how these algorithms or machine learning processes function. But yeah, hopefully you can get something out of it um, that you might want to incorporate in your own workflow or your own practice through either, yeah, through this new medium that's kind of surfacing. Um, so yeah, I might as well start here. Um, cool, so I think that's visible, yeah, cool. Um, so yeah. It's going to be an introduction to AI and machine learning tools um, for creative purposes, I suppose. Um, to give a bit of a background on me, um, I've only kind of started using AI and machine learning tools about a year ago, um, which is really basic, really basic tools. And I kind of only first got into it on did a small project on it. And I've been kind of learning it on and off the past year or so. Um, and it's gaining more traction as well within uh, different artists using it, um, new breakthroughs in AI. Um, so it's pretty exciting time for uh, artists, uh, creators, uh, anyone that's interested in technology really to, to mess around with these tools. Um, so, so yeah, as I said, it won't be too complex that I'm going over it, um, or the stuff that I'm going over. Um, so yeah, I'll go to the second slide here. So yeah, this is an overview of what AI is and machine learning. Uh, can do and can accomplish. Um, and I'll introduce some tools such as uh, VQGAN and um, plus Clip, which is one of the most popular tools at the moment and has extended into other other more popular tools and more sophisticated tools as well. And I'll also go into Google Colab, which is uh, what we'll be using or what if you want to follow along. Um, I'll post links as well in the chat. It's all open source to an extent um, so and there's no requirements for like having this beefy GPU or, or anything because you can even if you just have a Google account a Gmail account you're able to or a, a Google Drive account you're able to set up um, set up a access to like a remote server that's running like a, a remote machine that's running like a really really powerful GPU which would just be yeah too expensive to buy um, and yeah, so I'll introduce a few tools. Um, and the goal is to kind of just, uh, I suppose, open, like I suppose, introduce you to all these tools and maybe you might think of them using an experimental way or adding them to your, to your workflow um, in some extent. Um, so yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> so what you probably think of AI is like, uh, you know, like the, the Terminator or like this evil, you know, entity that's, uh, that's kind of surpassed human, you know, consciousness or whatever, and it's going to take over the world. Um, and so there's, yeah, that's the that's the general kind of consensus when when you kind of first hear the term of AI and whatever it's built up culturally through, you know, I don't know, through like films and you know, like sci-fi novels or whatever. 
Um, but AI is actually not, <laughs> and it's going to be actually not like that powerful. Um, and it probably will never reach that kind of a level, I guess, um, within the next 30 years at least. So it's more of a tool for collaboration with, with, <laughs> with, with the human and the machine rather than the machine, I suppose, taking over um, all autonomy. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's what, that's what called, so there's two different types of AI, which is called like, uh, like general AI and narrow AI. So general AI is this, this, you know, Terminator where it's like good at like, you know, doing multiple tasks, um, you know, it could be like supercomputers, robotics, um, where they want to like pool all these things in together to do very, very complex tasks. Um, which is, yeah, it's, it's, it's far away in the future. So <laughs> don't be too worried about that. Um, but the one that we're interested in is narrow AI, and that's kind of the most popular one, I guess, at the moment, um, uh, when we're talking about AI um, to distinguish the two. Um, so what narrow AI does is it does one task really well. So if I want to, so an example here is the bottom, it's like object detection. So if I want to, you know, be able to like, you know, like have a camera, be able to see, you know, pedestrians, cars, bikes, you know, it's able to like do those simple tasks. And sometimes, you know, it's not perfect. It probably will uh, fuck up uh, a lot <laughs> in doing so. Um, and it's, you know, it's it's not trustworthy whatsoever, but it's, it's good, right? It's good. Um, and then one kind of, uh, one popular, I suppose, uh, application as well would be the, uh, if I click on it here, it's, uh, I think it's a clip model. No, it's not clip model. Um, no, I don't know what the actual thing is. Um, but pretty much what it does, it, it transfers like, uh, like horses into zebras. So that's what it's doing. Like, you know, it's just, if I open up the video here, it's just, yeah, it's pretty, it's CycleGAN. So yeah, CycleGAN. So what it does is it trains on images of horses, on images of zebras, and it tries to, I suppose, like um, superimpose, um, or like recognize the horse, superimpose the zebra texture or pattern on top of it, which is like, uh, which is, is pretty cool. Um, but, you know, it, it works pretty well, right? It, it's quite low res, but it's, it's cool. Um, and that's one kind of interesting, you know, application of um, AI at the moment. But it's super narrow. Like if you put a human in there, it's it's gonna look funky. Maybe that's what you want to go for. But and that's pretty cool. And you can come up with like interesting ideas. And um, we're actually looking at how these um, how these uh, uh, models work. Um, and kind of yeah, mess around and do kind of like either a like conceptual art piece or or whatever. Do just do something crazy, right? Break it. <laughs> Um, which is cool. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, that's that's narrow AI, and there's loads of different models for different things. Um, I think object object detection is probably like the main one. Um, but yeah, it it it, it, it is what it is. Um, cool. So yeah, and then the next piece is so. This is a, a, a model that I was working with recently, which is like text to image. So how it works is I put in a text prompt and it tries to like recreate an image that looks like it. So you can see it, it's, it's not perfect <laughs> in any way. It's pretty bad, um, um, but it's, it can lead to like interesting results. And this, this is something, you know, what, something that we'll be looking at. Um, one of the notebooks that we look at specifically, which is like text to, text to image uh, synthesis or whatever generation. Um, so I'm excited to show you that. Um, during the end of the workshop, um, and I'll uh, yeah I'll post I'll post the the link to the the, the notebook where you can it's open source uh, you can run your own uh, tests on it or whatever run your own prompts so maybe try out the workshop like uh, think about some prompts which you might want to uh, you might want to input into the uh, uh, model it should be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where AI is at right now. It's it's not great whatsoever, but it's it's getting there. It, it's becoming like an interesting medium, where you can explore, you know, these interesting uh, these inter these interesting models, um, which are very in their infancy, but it's just it's fun to use. Um, and yeah, so I was I wanted to go over. Okay, there's an image. Okay, there we go. 
uh, I wanted to go over um, how AI and like mach like models actually work and what you need for it to work. Um, and it's kind of split into three like main categories, uh, which are the data set, the training, and the testing. Um, so if we take uh, this model here, which I've shown an example of, it's called Style Transfer. And I'm pretty sure it was, it, it was developed by someone at Google. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, where pretty much it learns from these, like, say, these set of, like, uh, these set of, of like, paintings, maybe. Um, and it has a certain aesthetic or style to it. And it, it learns, the AI pretty much learns through these massive um, data sets of images that it, it figures out how to construct, you know, these these paintings or in a way um, that we don't actually understand um, at the moment, but it's all down to like different features and whatnot. Um, and so, yeah, it's able to be, to transfer a kind of transfer, transfer the style of the image um, to another image, which is really cool. But that's also it kind of it's um, it's kind of bound to the data set that you put into it. So if I train, uh, yeah, a set of paintings, which from a, like a my, one of my favorite painters or something, and it learns how to create those paintings. But you know, uh, it it can't do anything else. That's all it can do. Um, so yeah, there's there's cool applications to it, and so you you get the you get the data set, you train that data set on a certain model. In this case, it would be style transfer, and then. The testing part is where you input the image of the cat and you try to like uh, try to like uh, transfer yeah transfer that style over, um, and that's kind of the basis of how to, it's it's super simplistic overview, <laughs> um, but that's that's how it works um, and they're kind of the three pillars um, of uh, of using AI, um, so yeah um, I want to introduce some artists next which I think are really cool and you might get some inspiration off of. That are actually uh, well, two are working with uh, AI in kind of e exploring what AI can do and how it affects affects us and different ecologies, um, which is quite interesting. The first one is uh, Mario Klingman or Quasimodo, which uh, he works with these uh, a specific algorithm called GANs, which is General Adversarial Networks. And so how they work is, uh, so if I, if I train it on a set of, uh, say, faces of myself, like I have a, a thousand faces of myself, and I want this AI to be able to, to draw uh, f my face, right? Um, so it's going to try and learn and learn, and each, each evolution, it's going to get better at it. And so how this scan works is uh, it kind of, so the first evolution might be terrible. It could be just pure noise. And so the uh, the GAN might be just like, no, go back to the start, learn uh, uh, kind of learn from what the mistakes you made and try and improve it. And that's how you know it gets better over time. And he's and Mario Klingman has some great works, especially his like neural glitch work, which is he's actually messing with the GAN itself and extracting different artifacts um, which make it quite unique. Um, like this this picture here on the right hand side. Um, and yeah, but he's like he's he builds. I'm pretty sure he builds his own. Like uh, you know, he's he's really interested in digging into the code, which is it's usually coded in Python. Um, so he's able to do that, which is quite cool. Um, and then, yeah, so that's just kind of working with AI itself, like it's proper hardcore stuff. Um, but then when you move then to one of my my friend here, Nikita, um, who does these like amazing like three D sculptures. But like mixes the textures with AI, I think, or uh, he like whatever he puts the I forget what it's called, but yeah, he gets the texture, puts it onto the the model, and he creates this really uh, it's called an interpolation, but he interpolates between different textures, and it comes off really really cool. Um, but that just shows one case of like uh, I suppose using AI and part of your if your your toolkit in a way you know um and that kind of opens up so many opportunities for kind of, if you have just to thinking of different ways where you can just experiment on top of the medium you're you're, you're already you're already your, your primary practice might be in or your your interest or your hobby and seeing what ai has to offer in terms of um, yeah what it can do um and then i wanted to introduce 
I don't want to go too long about explaining all this. Um, but yeah, there's another guy called Robbie Barrett, and he's like uh, he's super young, but he's just like he's he's absolute genius. Um, and especially in the early years of using uh, like GANs um, and like coding GANs or coding different models, he did he did so much. Um, I'll just put this up on the screen here. Um, but yeah, I only, only found out about him recently, but he's actually pretty, pretty insane. Um, like one of his first projects, if I can find it. Uh, yeah, like he has these really cool, like, like he's using yeah different neural networks to be able to create, like have kind of create these really surrealist uh, pictures or kind of like a, it has a, a glitch kind of element to it in a way. Um, but he did stuff where he, like this one in particular where he took a load of uh, images of uh, models. I don't know, maybe it was Balenciaga runway or something. I don't know, but he, he pretty much fed those into into a GAN and he was able to create like these new outfits in a way. And it was, you know, what was the creator, what if the creator de director of Balenciaga was a computer, um, which is quite cool. And this was like in like 2018 maybe. So this is super, super early. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool, pretty cool what you can do. Um, but yeah, these are these are interesting. I think he used Pix two Pix as well, which is another model which um, pretty much just uh, if I draw a cat and if I want to put a texture on a cat, then I'll put the texture. That's pretty much what it does. Um, um, but I won't be going over that <coughs> in this lecture. <coughs> but um, or this workshop. But yeah, those are two pretty two good examples of like how you could use AI kind of uh, in, in whatever creative process that you're, you're using. Um, and then here, so I want to go over the overview of like the different tools that are available for to be able to like uh, to, to do these sort of like experiments and one is more user friendly th than the other. Um, and but one has more limitations than the other. And this is between Google Colab and Runway and ML. Um, so I'll start with Google Colab first because that's the one that I mainly use. Um, so it's, uh, I guess it's like a, it's like a in-browser, so if I type in Google Colab here, it's an in-browser like Python, uh, like virtual, virtual machine, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so you're pretty much connecting to a GPU somewhere off in, in Google, wherever their servers are, and you're utilizing that GPU um, to do whatever you want to, to run on. So you can pretty much do anything you want on it, right? It has, the issue is it has no, it has no uh, GUI in a, in a way. So like you're just like doing off lines of code, I suppose, you know, but it's, it's okay for, for what uh, most models that are kind of open source and popular out there, this is, this is fine. Um, but then again, if you want to pay the 10 euros per month or $10, I think it's per month, you get access to better GPUs, which means faster, faster uh, times for processing different uh, algorithms, and then yeah, so it's and and yeah, but and also you don't get limit, you get li you don't get limited. I think there's like a twelve hour time period where you're, if you're on just the normal subscription, you only get twelve hours of actually using that GPU. But if you're on the pro version, you get twenty four hours. So it's really, it's really up to you. Um, what you want to do with that. And then there's another one, which is 50, 50 euros the next tier, and that's obviously better, but it's always constantly changing. Um, and but for this workshop, I think the free the free one is okay. Um, it will take a bit longer for you to to render out these uh, these different models, um, or these, these outputs, but it should be fine. Um, if you just want to like start and get test, you know, testing and exploring kind of the Google Colab interface, uh, how it works. Um, and then there's Runway ML, which works on. So it's a it's an app you can also it's an in in web app. It's in browser app. It's also an app you can download on your PC, um, and it has like everything like really. It it's really for like kind of people that don't have or kind of don't want to work without a GUI. Or I just like it's like the Photoshop machine learning, in a way, um, and it's really good. Um, but it works off credits, so the more time you you use it, uh, you know, the, you have to buy credits, and so it's like it's gonna be way more expensive in the long term than Google Colab. But 
if you want, you know, visual stimulus and actually see what you're doing and, you know, the kind of like the in-between processes, then this is much, and it's more user-friendly. Um, but personally, I never, I've never used it. Um, I've used the free one, but I find Google Colab just, it's more snappy in a way. Um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, the first, first thing I'm going to go over is the uh, tools for like audio, uh, kind of creating audio, or creating sound, which I think a lot of, um, <clears throat> a lot of you might be interested in. Um, uh, so I said I'd start with this. Um, so the first one is called Spec VQ GAN. So it was created by this guy called Vladimir Aishin, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, and so what this does is it, um, it pretty much turns each frame into like a spectrogram. So it's able to like extract sound from an image. And it's not just like, it's the sound that actually was there if while the, let me, sorry. It's actually the sound that was in, that was like in the environment of the image. So it's trying to capture or trying to like, yeah, emulate the sound that was potentially there. And this has been, and how, how it does this, it's been trained off of like, uh, like thousands of images with thousands of sounds. So if there's like, uh, if there's like a person in the, in the, in the audience or something, if there's like a picture of like a crowd or something and it's at a concert and if it's in, and so if you put that frame in, it's going to say, oh, these, you know, the humans, they, you know, they, they make sound of the concert. So there's going to be sound from them. And then like, what sound did they make? And there's going to be sound from the stage. So it actually emulates like, uh, like the actual sound that was happening at that moment in time, which is in, insane to think about, right? Um, but it's, it's really cool. Um, and it's really simple to use, really, really simple. Load of math here. I, I don't understand any of it, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, so I know I've made example videos here. If they play, maybe not. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, maybe not. Let me know if you can, maybe it's too late. <laughs> I think, I think, I think that was audible, maybe not. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's pretty much, uh, this is a, one, a video that I had lying around my computer ages ago. Um, and it's a load of video processing, multiple, you know, like, like I've mo the crowds are overlaid multiple times that there's like people that shouldn't be there, I guess. So this is what the, the, yeah, this is what pick was picked up from the spectrogram. Um, and I imagine if you <laughs> put a less processed video or more like, uh, uh, real, re realistic video, it would have a better um, output. But I find this just quite interesting, right? It's pretty, it's pretty eerie, and you know, it's creating these like uh, these these samples that you could possibly use in your work, or you know, you know, you could just get assets from it in a way. Um, and here's another one. It's of uh, Nikita's, um, one of Nikita's sculptures, um, and I just wanted to see what it would look like. Um, when the video was turned to audio. Um, and again, it's like... Yeah, it's like, it, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty creepy. Um, but yeah, there's, there's human voices in there, which is kind of weird. Um, but yeah, what platform? Sorry, I'm not reading this chat much. Um, what platform is this? So yeah, this, this is... I use Google Colab, which is just kind of a, a virtual machine and that allows you to use a really powerful GPU um, to be able to process these like insanely big uh, like like uh, algorithmic processes um, and these models. Um, this specifically is uh, Spec V Q GAN, and I will I think in the description uh, or in the old re resources is it there? No, it's not there. Um, I wonder, can I see? I'm not signed into my Twitch chat uh, or my Twitch account to be access to Twitch, um, Twitch chat. But if you look up um, Spec v, v Q Gun on uh, on on Google, to type in Spec V Q Gun Google Colab Notebook, it will come up. Um, but I think I have it here um, just to show you what it looks like. Um, 
so yeah, um, it's it's really simple. Um, I might go through this now just to maybe mm, maybe not. Um, let me see. So I might actually go through how Google Google Colab actually works, um, but not in this one specifically because there's some things that are kind of missing. Um, but yeah, so. If you want to explore this, you can look up. There's many tutorials on how to use spec VQGAN, um, which is which is cool. Um, but it's not the most interesting, which which I want to cover. Um, the most interesting one is definitely Jukebox, um, and Jukebox is made by OpenAI. And OpenAI are it's like a research uh, research company, I suppose, on everything. AI. They made and uh, did they did they make. Uh, did that maybe they made maybe not I was thinking of like the go thing they could have made that like AI that that uh, maybe I'm wrong I don't know but but anyways they have they're pretty much responsible for like for like everything like they have which we'll be going over later is clip they have image GPT um, they create these like they just do a lot of research and then they put it out into the world for either us to be like little little hamsters testing it or whatever I don't know. But uh, yeah, they're 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 uh, they're really cool. Um, but they made this thing called Jukebox, which is like music synthesis in a way. So they've pretty much got this huge this 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 library of five billion different songs from across loads of genres. Mainly, unfortunately, because of the historical bias, it's mainly like white artists and from the Western world. Um, but this is huge five billion uh, library which has so so many songs so many different artists and pretty much what you're able to do is you're able to pick an artist pick a genre maybe pick two genres and create a song from it right like a completely a completely uh just yeah just just a completely new 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 song unique song which is insane to think about um and so yeah i made a couple of examples here um which is called, so pretty much there's, so it goes to the first level. So if I want, also you can add your own lyrics, which is actually insane too. This one I did add the lyrics in, didn't come out <laughs> too great, but you're able to create it without lyrics too. Um, but yeah, this is the, pr the pre-upsampled version, which is the one that's not the good quality. So, um, but I'll show you the upsampled version after. So this song was created using uh, unknown, an unknown artist um, and the genres were children and experimental, right? So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see, you see what you think of it. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty noisy, <laughs> but uh, there's there's something there, right? I don't know what it is, but there's something. Um, yeah, it, it does have a rhythm, which is insane. So that's yeah, that's that's from the the <laughs> that's a, ge a completely new song generated from children experimental. Uh, genre from an unknown artist and then oh with, with also lyrics which are also not uh, they're very wild lyrics so <laughs> I didn't expect it to handle that well and this is so this is the upsample version which is the higher quality version I don't know if you can call it higher quality um, or good quality but it is higher quality so let me know if you can hear the difference <laughs> Slightly clearer. Did 
<laughs> it's pretty eerie, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of AI stuff is like very dreamlike in a way. Um, so yeah, that's that. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's pretty 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 insane what you can do. Um, I also wanted to show you. I don't know if I have it here, but there's like there's a huge list of art artists which you can choose from, um, and there's some great examples online for like just different creations made from this, um, which is cool. Um, so yeah, I'll move on. Oh, should I show you more? I've done some more stuff on this, but there's there was one song in particular which came out really good. I'm gonna see if I can find it. Um, maybe not. Um, but one song came out great. Um, so yeah, you see, you do see the Kanye West stem player. So okay, no, that's not what I want to do. So yeah. As a, as a STEM player uh, holder myself, <laughs> uh, I kind of, I like the whole idea of um, music source separation. Um, and so <clears throat> without forking out a stupid amount for a STEM player, you can just use this Google Collab notebook to, um, to, to do it for yourself. And it's super simple, super, super easy notebook, um, which literally it's like one line of code um, and then you feed in, you feed in, you feed in the file, the audio file, um, and yeah, it's you. You get your your drums, bass, vocals, and other, which is quite cool. Um, I don't think you even need a powerful like GPU to do this. You probably could do this on your home computer. Um, but yeah, it's 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 called Demux, um, and yeah, it's 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 insane. Um, so if you want your own easy stem player that's that's what you can do <laughs> so but yeah what i was thinking also um where uh, i was talking about when i was creating this new project was um or helping on this new project um with uh, with soyan park and uh, who will be up next uh we were discussing how um you could actually use this the, the this particular source separation on like this music you know and seeing uh, and seeing what you know comes out, you know what I mean. Like I don't know if any of the instruments are completely like, you know, identifiable. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's cool. It's a cool idea. Um, so that might be one one kind of clever use of using uh, two two different models thing together, and then you could use those samples as you know if you're creating some sound design or, or whatever, you know? So it's pretty cool. Um, so that's all for the audio side. Um, I think those are the main like three ones that are accessible. Um, towards the end, I'm going to have like a resources here um, where there's a, a Colab notebook library, which pretty much has all this stuff in it. So you can just, um, I think I'll share the link if possible um, and you can, I'll leave it up on screen for a bit if you want to like take a screenshot. Um, yeah, Facebook is behind uh, Demux, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what like the stem player actually. The stem player is different. Uh, I know Cano Engineering. They use a different uh, type of um, splitting algorithm. But yeah, this is Facebook's behind this. Um, so maybe you don't want to use it because. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, so everything's here at the end. You can take screenshots. Um, I, I'm, I should be able to log into the Twitch chat and send this. Um, I don't know if I can do it through OBS, but yeah, it'd be cool. Um, and so the last one and the notebook that I'm going to be discussing is going to be more on the visual side. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to go over this notebook um, in the last like 20 minutes here of the workshop. Um, and you can do it as well if you want to follow along. Also, um, you can... Uh, it's pretty it's pretty simple there's not much to it and I'll guide you through it as well so don't worry um, but yeah this is called VQGAN plus clip and it's actually quite familiar to the spec VQGAN um, it uses this uses a spectrogram and a GAN and VQGAN and this this uses VQGAN plus clip and what clip is it's 
pretty much like if I describe something like red birds or a bit here in, and insects art station it's going to try and score an image based on that so it's like a scoring system so if I have so this image if, if you see here it's a, it's a fully completed image and I might have a score of red birds of like I don't see any red birds in there, so it could have a score of like two percent. A bit could have a score of it looks pretty bitty, so I'm gonna say like like a hundred percent, and so it kind of scores the image. And I have variables here which I want to create an image with, and the GAN will try and generate the image closest to my the parameters I put in. And so you probably have seen this a lot, and it's great for creating visuals. You can literally put in a text prompt, and it creates an image. Um, from it and it can be as a detail of a text prompt as you want it will create something at the end so that's called like text to image generation which is quite cool and if you've seen the uh the most recent post on the bitbird instagram um i created a video today using these parameters um which was like red birds i wanted to be red birds um i wanted to be slightly 8-bit i wanted to have zero insects in it i wanted to to be like to, to pretty much emulate a various um, image on ArtStation, I want it to be flying, whatever that means, and have no faces. Um, so this scan, so which clip runs off of, is called ImageNet, and so it pretty much pulls in together like every image that's on the internet, and so like each image has like uh, you know on the alt, different alt tags, it could be categorized at something, and so that's how um, that's how the AI knows. If like what um, uh, what uh, uh, what the what the GAN is looking for, so you know if there's you know there's going to be biases within those data sets, um, but it's really cool how uh, how pretty much you can enter a sentence and it scours, um, analyzes thousands of images, thousands of alt texts which we've uploaded, everyone's uploaded all together, and creates an image, um, which kind of like. With all those different, uh, with all those different images and those different descriptions, it's really cool. Um, so yeah, this is one that I created today, um, and also you can add animations into it too, which is quite cool. Um, so yeah, it starts out here. It's only so this took me like thirty minutes, forty minutes to render out, uh, which is a hundred frames. Um, so if you're using, and I was using a the pro GPU, um, but if you're using the free GPU, it might be a bit slower, but you can still create images really, really fast. Um, sorry, so how do you run these from, from GitHub? I'll show you. I'll show you that in a second. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run you through how you can access these these notebooks, how you can import them into Google Colab, and yeah, it's, it's easy from there. Um, I'll show you all the way so you can look. Um, so it works on Google Images. So so <clears throat> yeah. So this GAN is trained on ImageNet. Which is ImageNet is like pretty much this this company or I don't know organization pulled together pretty much like scraped all the images off of Google Images you know Facebook I don't know like everything, and so on those images they have different tags and within those tags you know it's able to um, uh, it's able to def to categorize a certain image, and then that's how the AI knows um, what to create off those categorizations in a way. Um, so yeah, it's like every image on the internet, which is insane to think about. Um, but yeah, this is this is what I created today. It's an animation with these prompts, and it's quite it's quite surreal. And it creates like I don't know what's going on here. Like there's there's like a it seems like a like a hut on a or like a house a hut a house on a on a on a river or a lake. Um, and then it kind of zooms in, and you get like this uh, more houses with kind of a bird emerging from it, a red bird, which is cool. Um, and yeah, it's really flowy, it's really dreamlike, it's, it's cool. Um, and so each 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 image is, is being generated, um, you know, as it goes along from the previous image, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, crazy is really f like flow-like, uh, yeah, dreamlike images um, or videos. Um, which resembles something of the prompt. <laughs> and you can make it smoother as well with different stuff, which is quite cool. Um, and then I also had a video, which of, actually no, I'll, I'll go over the notebook first. Um, so yeah, so if I go to one of the resources here, um, 
and I go to this this library of notebooks, or I think I actually have it here. Two seconds. So yeah. So I think you should be able to see that. Yeah, okay. So this is Google Colab. Um, and if you type literally this into Google, this VQ GAN plus clip, Z quant, no, you don't, you don't type in, maybe I've typed in that, <laughs> but it's like, uh, it's it pretty much will be there. It's open source. Um, and so you're gonna be shown with this page. And what you want to do is you want to go file and save a copy into your drive. And this is kind of important, I guess, um, because it pretty much saves a version of this notebook into your drive, just to just to, to um, preserve it, I suppose, or ease, ease of access. Um, and so, yeah, you're, you're kind of presented with this, this interface, I suppose, um, where this is the files folder, so you'll see all your files here. Currently, uh, it just shows the virtual machine files. So this is the files on the computer somewhere in, in the world. Um, but we will hook up our Google Drive so we can actually like save the images on the Google Drive um, or save the model as well on the Google Drive, um, which is cool. So, excuse me. So if you go to here called ch and then go down to change runtime. So it's runtime, go down to change runtime. And um, you wanna make sure this is on GPU. This is really important stuff because you do not want to be using uh, a no hardware accelerator or a TPU, which is, I don't, it's not mainly for graphical processes. Um, but yeah, make sure that's on. Uh, and if you have a Google Colab Pro, which I, I doubt it, um, you can click high RAM as well to make stuff a lot faster. Um, so yeah, you're gonna be, that's all you need, all the setup you need to do is to make sure that your runtime, go to change runtime and make sure that's GPU. Um, Cause that's, yeah, pretty much adds to the, uh, adds, adds to the acceleration. <laughs> of the processes. Um, and so yeah, first you want to check what GPU you have, because that's quite important. I have a, oh sorry, <laughs> so these are cell blocks. And what they do is, there's a bit of code in it, these are the code, right? Um, which is, this is the line of code, and there's comments, don't worry about it, it's fine. All you got to do is press this play button, because <laughs> that runs, that executes the code. Um, so you're going to be getting yeah, I got a Tesla P100, uh, which has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is really good. You probably will get, if you have a free free Colab account, it's K80. It's okay. It's fine for for what we'll be doing or what, you know, what you want to do. Um, and yeah, we can run this to stop disconnecting. Um, and then we have to just install different libraries. So just press play again. It'll give you a nice kind of indication of how far along the process that you're, um, yeah, just downloading everything, installing all the requirements. Because to run different types of models, you need to be able to, uh, you need to be able to like, yeah, install. Because you're installing all this on like a clean virtual machine, or machine, in 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 some server. And obviously, I've had, I'm not having that issue. Okay, good. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you ever have an issue, you can also just. Uh, go up here, restart runtime or factory reset runtime. It's it it can be confusing, but just think of it as pressing just pressing the first pressing the buttons as you go down. Um, so it's just pressing all the buttons. Um, uh, hopefully I don't run out of time, but uh, but yeah, it's just installing all these. It's just pressing play. Um, like, <laughs> um, but after a few times, it's fine. It it'll be okay. Um, and you can just install everything you select. This is the this is the image data sets I was talking about, image image net, which is huge. Um, so I've installed that. Just keep pressing play, keep going down. It's fine until this is the big one which you want to go to. Um, but yeah, let me. Okay, all done here. And so this is like the main. This is what you'll be working. In. So as long as you press play all the way down, make sure you have a GPU. It's okay. Um, and so you, what you want to do here is enter the prompt that you wish to uh, wish to see or wish to have or whatever. Um, so I might just use the prompt that I had here. Um, if I can grab it instead of typing out everything, um, and I just plug it in here. So the pro what the prompt is is going to be. Uh, 
single uh, single commas and then just have your your red birds or whatever or your text and then these are the keyframes so so if I want it to be 50 frames in length so I put 50 in here between 0 and 50 I want red birds to be always there right always so I put this to I put on frame 0 I want it to be 1 on frame 50 I want it to be 1, one. same with 8 bits um, from 0 0.5 at frame 0 I want it to be kind of half 8 bits and then at frame 50 I still want it to be half 8 bit and then you can also put negative weights on it so if I don't want insects at all I can put minus one so it doesn't show up um, and same with art station if I want to have art station I can put like yeah I want it to be one the whole time I want it to on, on frame zero and from some from frame zero to 50 I also want it to be one so it's constant um, and you can add more keyframes in here, but don't. You can also just enter in like like tags, so there doesn't have to be any like these keyframes. Um, and then you want to set the width and the height. Um, so I want this three hundred by three hundred. Uh, it's quite small, but there's also uh, upresing that can happen at the end, so you can upscale stuff. Um, and then you go down here, intervals. That's how many images I want. Um, max iterations uh, minus one is fine seeds minus one don't need to change any of this and I can press play hopefully it works okay it did um, and that's it simple right you can you can uh, you can relax after that you can just fire up the AI doesn't work <laughs> obviously um, but uh, let me check what is wrong But yeah, there can be some a lot of issues with uh, with using this, but uh, it's telling me that there's no such file or directory called content vkgan, and there shouldn't be, but I don't know why it's like that. Um, oh yeah, and this comes up a lot of times too, where you just have to click that you're not a robot because you don't want to be stealing GPU time. Um, yeah, let me sort this out because I want to actually show you how it how it functions. Um, I don't know why it's not working. Um, let me see. I was worried this would happen. <laughs> let me restart the runtime and see. But for in between, uh, if I factor reset it, resets everything, and I can go back to the start and make sure. Yeah, okay, I can just do this all again, just keep pressing it down. Maybe it doesn't work, but we'll see. Um, but in the meantime, I'd like to show you another. So that's pretty much, first off, this is what Google Colab is. It is complex, um, but at the surface, it, it is complex or at first glance, but it's it's really not after you get it. Well, and loads of people have created these notebooks where it's super simple to use, and there's tons of tutorials out there, tons of YouTube videos, which go have these like 20, 30 minute like in-depth into each notebook, which is quite cool. If you ever want to look that, that up, um, you can just type in the name of the, the notebook and into YouTube and see what it is. Um, but yeah, maybe I didn't click loading libraries, but I'm pretty sure I did. Because um, I was at this today and it wasn't, did the same thing, but I fix it sometimes. Could not resolve host. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it could be just something... Yeah, it's weird. But the thing is, I was, this looked a lot different to me <laughs> before. Um, let me see, maybe I'm using the wrong notebook. I hope not, but. Hmm. see no I don't know what it is did I get the same issue yeah I did get the same issue for some reason hmm I don't know that's kind of disappointing because I wanted to show you how I'll try and run it again but 
yeah, I don't know why that's happening. But anyways, in the meantime, sorry about that, but I wanted to show you another... I have a, I ha luckily I have something here which actually shows, goes through the process of it, um, which is quite cool. So this is another um, Disco Diffusion. Uh, so it's another uh, text to image generation or prompt uh, model uh, and notebook, which has gone, gone pretty popular in the past while. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's quite more taxing than the VQ Gun, the clip. Um, but uh, but yeah, it takes longer, so you might need a pro account. But it's it's quite cool, um, and you can <laughs> not like uh, that once this this works usually, um, but it takes ages to render out. But luckily, I have a video here of it. Um, but this this one gives like way more um, way more detail, I guess. Um, so this took if I can set it up on OBS here. No, that's my camera. Uh, sorry. So is that visible? I can't see with this. I think it is. Yeah, it is. Okay, so this is one I, I kind of rendered out today. Um, I think the prompt was like a swarm of birds um, singing in harmony, I think. Um, and this was over two hours. Um, and how it works is pretty much it just goes from pure noise to, to, to an image, which is quite cool. Um, so can 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 you see that? I'm just not sure. I think so. I'm gonna. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna play it and hopefully that you can see. Okay, cool. You can see it. Thank you. So this is over like a two-hour process. Um, it's quite more detailed than the one on Instagram, but it takes way longer. And this is just one frame. On Instagram, it was 100 frames, and that took like 40 minutes. So, so yeah, this is uh, two hours of recording here. So you see how like the AI like it like generates from just like these 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 this this noise field and latches onto different things within the noise fields and tries to like identify various birds in the sky or or whatever you know different objects, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, it, it's a uh, it's a long process, and it's only AI is only if in its infancy. But it's it's quite cool to think of like what you might be able to do with this. And sorry about the notebook not working. Um, if I have more time, <laughs> I would I would uh, I would go over and fix it. Um, but I try to just get every try to do kind of an overview of everything. Um, just see if you're interested because it's such big, such a big, such a big field. Um, uh, and you it might just pique your interest, you know. So. But yeah, I think this is this is the final image. I think as my mouse goes wild around the screen. Um, so yeah, this is the end image, and it's just it's it's fantastic what like it can do, right? It's it's quite it's quite painterly. Um, but if I put in a prompt saying I don't know, like uh, I could say like a. Uh, like a Cinema 4D uh, render, and it would come out like a Cinema 4D render. Or if I put in like uh, like V-ray tracing or something, it's it's crazy, right? What you can do with it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to cover. Re I kind of I didn't want to go into the details of um, of the different notebooks, but what notebooks are out there and what kind of use cases there are for these notebooks, and why you can look into if you want to look into. And I've put a lot of resources into into this um, tab. So you can go over this um, platform for pollinations. It's called pollinations.ai. And it's really good for just like kind of breaking down all these different models, like clip guided VQ GAN is there. That one might work, I don't know. Um, but yeah, there's all these different models and you can click on it and it gives you, it's very, it's very, it's like a, it's like a cheap runaway ML, right? It's really friendly. Um, quite simple, but yeah, it's called pollinations of the end. It's, it's just probably the best source for starting out. Um, as you get to learn like all these, you know, different text to image tools, um, or text to video tools, um, audio to video. It's really cool. Um, uh, that's where like I found the spec VQ GAN, which I didn't know existed until last week, which is cool. Um, and there's like super resolution. The it is a different music splitter. Everything's really cool. Um, I think this is the best resource for people that want to start out and learn. Um, 
And also there's this guy called Derek Schultz on YouTube um, who does uh, like machine, uh, machine learning uh, like uh, courses, tutorials for free, which is really cool. Um, and that's where I learned, I learned a lot of my stuff over the last year. He's a really cool guy. Um, and he has a Patreon and a Slack channel, so you can get integrated with the community as well if you want to learn more, and they'll help you out. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's all I wanted to cover. Let me change back this to here. Yeah, I think that's all I wanted to cover um, for this, and I, hopefully it was an insightful uh, workshop. Maybe 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 not as a, a in a practical way, but it might have opened your uh, open your eyes to a lot of, of AI and machine learning tools that you can use in your workflow. Um, so yeah, uh, anytime, anytime. Uh, if there's any questions, I have like five minutes. Um, maybe not. <laughs> maybe maybe I, it could have been a bit exhausting because I ran through that. But uh, but yeah. I think Soyun Park is on next, um, who I'm working with at the moment. So, yeah, I can't. I won't be able to go over time. So it should be. I think. I think this. This is right. This is saved as a video. So if you want to go over like any of the things I was talking about and look over different resources, um, just make sure to to uh, check out the. I think the, the video on Twitch, right? It's saved after. So, so yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'll send on the. I'll send on the links. I'm sorry. I. I, I should have been. I should have been connected to the Twitch chat. Um, but, unfortunately, I wasn't. So it's my first stream. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll make. I'll make sure to get the Google Slides ASAP to you as well. But yeah, thanks for thanks for thanks for having me and being <laughs> and being so uh, being so kind <laughs> to, uh, to to kind of the what I brought to the table and hopefully yeah hopefully inspires you to uh, to use AI in some capacity. Um, but yeah, cool. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to go I guess um, because Soyun's on next. Um, I'm just going to put on the waiting screen here. Thank you so much. Um, Bitbird for allowing me to, to come on and present a workshop here. Um, and good luck to Soyun as well. And thank everyone for tuning in. I, I appreciate it so much. Um, so yeah, have a good night and yeah, goodbye.